Hi and welcome to another Storytime show with me, Komoko. Today marks a very important date in the Sikhi calendar. We're going to be talking about how our Cha Sahibzade became martyrs for our Sikh religion. For Christians, December is a time of year to send warm wishes and to celebrate Christmas and the birth of Jesus Christ. But for Sikh, it's about fighting for our religion. Sikh have Singh in their surname, which means lion, and lions are fearless. And this is exactly what the Sikh demonstrate throughout history and to this very day. Guru Gobind Singh Ji is our 10th Guru. He had four sons who were collectively known as the Cha Sahib Zade. Baba Ajit Singh Ji, Baba Juja Singh Ji, Baba Zora Singh Ji, Baba Fateh Singh Ji. Baba Zora Singh Ji and Baba Fateh Singh Ji were the two youngest of the Cha Sahib Zade. And they were told by Razir Khan, who was a Nawab of Sehand, at that time, that they had to be bricked alive because they refused to convert to Islam. This event took place on the 26th of December, 1705. Before the Char Sahibs had obtained martyrdom, they were captured and kept in a cold tower called the Danda Burj with their grandmother, Mata Gudriji. This was in the middle of winter. They were then taken to Fatiga Sahib where there was a brick wall that was built around them. But this broke down before the prince lost their breasts. Razir Khan then ordered the executioners to slit the throats of the young princes. After hearing the news, Mata Gudriji took her last breath. The two older princes, Baba Ajit Singh Ji and Baba Jaja Singh Ji, both fought in the Chamkor battle, and that's where they obtained martyrdom. This is how Guru Gobind Singh Ji lost his four sons and his mother. Guru Gobind Singh Ji couldn't go to the battle himself as he was stabbed in the chest by his enemy. Therefore he trained his disciples and appointed Baba Banda Singh Bahadur as their leader. The Sikhs fought in the battle of Chapajiri where Wazir Khan was then killed. This took place on the 22nd of May, 1710. Sikh have always been taught to stand up for the righteousness and to never give up. Martyrdom of the Shote Sahib Zade. Led by the governor, Wazir Khan, huge enemies surrounded Anandpur. The Guru and the Sikh were cut off from food and water. The Sikh were starving. They went for months and months and months and they were in such a desperate situation. Wazir Khan promised the Guru, if you leave Anandpur Sahib, I will allow you to go wherever you want to go and no one's going to attack you. I will swear on the Holy Quran. This imperial promise was written on the Holy Quran, which is the Muslim holy book. It was signed by the emperor himself. The Guruji knew that the opposing armies were all liars, but the Sikh convinced the Guru's mother, Mata Gudriji, to leave the fort. My son, if we stay here, we will all die. We have no food or water. We have no choice but to believe their promise. We must leave. Everyone left during the night to cross River Silsa. Razir Khan went back on his word. He broke the oath written on the Holy Quran and he asked everyone to attack the sick. It was a fierce battle. Many were captured and killed. The Guru's two younger sons were only six years old and eight years old at the time. Baba Fatih Singh Ji, Baba Zoro Singh Ji. They crossed the river and they ended up alone with their grandmother, Mata Gudriji. They wandered through the jungle looking for shelter. Grandmother, do you ever think that we will see good Bitta again? Even if we don't see Bitta Ji again, it just matters that we remember God, Mata Gudriji replied. She always kept a spiritual mood. 
My dear children, remember that your grandfather Guru Teg Bahadurji was a brave saint. When his life was taken, he never forgot to meditate on God. They came across another traveller in the jungle. You must be lost. Come with me. You'll be safe with me. Do you remember who I am? I used to save you in the Guru's house. You recognise me. You can trust me. <sighs> Mata Gujriji and the Shote Sahibzade trusted him. However, he betrayed them for money. The two young boys and Mata Gujriji were then taken away. The situation was awful, but Mata Gujriji held a sacred prayer. Bless you, my dear boys. Never forget the sacred tradition of the Sikh and our Gurus. May God bless you. May you always be in high spirits. The boys were fearless and kept having fun. We will. We're never going to give up our faith, they laughed. Wazir Khan ordered, Bring me the sons of that wretched Gobind Rai. He was corrected by members of his party. Sir, you've got to call him Gobind Singh now. I don't care, said Wazir Khan. Just bring the children to me so I can convert them to one of us. A soldier told the boys, You can't go through this normal door. You've got to step through this tiny door. You see, he did that because he was trying to trick the Guru's sons. But the Guru's sons were too quick-witted and they saw through his trap. They are trying to get us to bow to the governor. Ha, we're going to go in feet first. The boys laughed and crawled through the little door backwards with their feet first. They called out, Wahe Guruji Ka Khalsa, Wahe Guruji Ki Fateh. Everyone in the court was surprised at their bold spirit. They thought, it'd be great to have these boys with us once they convert to Islam, that is. One of them said, you should show some respect to your ruler. Bow to him like a proper subject. The boys responded boldly, we are sick of Guru Nanak Devji. We do not bow to any man. We only bow to the Guru. Governor Wazir Khan saw how fearless and bright these small boys were. He thought that history would seem as a great man if he could change them to their religion. How sweet and brave they are. They will be great men one day. They will make excellent Muslims. My dear boys, our religion will be proud to have you. Recite our religious prayers and you will be welcomed as one of us. We will give you land, wealth, happiness. I will give you anything you ask for. Oh dear. The Sahibs Adeh talked to each other for a moment. Sahibs Adeh Surova Singh said, Little brother, the time has come to sacrifice our lives like our grandfather, Guru Teg Bahadurji. What do you think? Sahib Zada Fateh Singh Ji said, Our grandfather gave his head but not his faith. We must follow his example. We have taken Amrit. We are blessed by the spirit and by the sword. Why should we worry about death? Let's give our lives. Sikhi will grow and his tyrants will fall. The Sahib Zada spoke to the wicked Wazir Khan. We come from a virtuous family. Our father is Guru Gobind Singh Ji. Our grandfather is Guru Teg Bahadur Ji. And our great grandfather is Guru Har Gobind Ji. We will follow their example. Our faith is more important. We don't care for your wealth. You can't bribe us, you fool. We will never give up Sikhi. When you killed our grandfather, you started a fire. And when you kill us, that fire will explode. You will be destroyed and we will not lose our faith. We won't give up Sikhi no matter what. Death has no meaning for us. Governor Wazir Khan wasn't used to being spoken to like that, and especially from young children. He said to his priest, did you just hear what these little boys 
said. Do you think that they're innocent children? These boys are just rebels like their father. We must punish them. The priest didn't know what to say. But your governorship, we can't punish them. They have not committed any crimes. It says in our law of our religion, Vizir Khan interrupted again. They are a threat. Have you heard what they're saying? He really had no good reason to punish his innocent and brave sons of the Guru, so he tried convincing them again. Young boys, you are all so young in age. You should be enjoying life. If you listen to me, you will get happiness in life, and in the afterlife, you will live in paradise. The Sahib Zadeh laughed and said, Do not fear death. We will sacrifice everything to keep our faith. The governor was outraged that he couldn't convince the boys in any way. He tried to taunt them. Your older brothers are now dead. Your father also died on the battlefield. The governor was not right and in their hearts the boys knew the truth. They said, our father is a great man. No one can kill him. He is protected by the immortal God. He will never fall into your hands. He could destroy all of you in a moment if he wanted to, but instead he follows the laws of the heavens. They were so brave and the governor was really impressed. He wanted to convert them to Islam even more. So instead of giving them a punishment right away, he gave them another chance. Why don't you go and ask your grandmother if she would prefer you to die at such a young age or if she wants you to change your religion and live. When they got back to Mata Gudriji, she kissed their foreheads. They told her everything. She blessed them. You have such high spirits. I'm very proud of you. You have both shown the greatest strength. You are the light of the Guru. Don't forget the sacrifice of Guru Arjun Dev Ji and Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. Don't ever give up. God's love is always with you. That night, they all slept in a freezing cold tower. And in the morning, they were taken to the court again. The boys listened to what their grandmother said, and the whole day, they didn't move. That night, again, they slept in the freezing tower with Mata Gutriji again. On the third day, they were given another chance to either convert or die. They stood firm. Until the end of our lives, we will stand up to those who manipulate and control us. Vizier Khan asked them again, Boys, what will I do if I allow you to live? They boldly responded, We will dedicate our lives to ending tyrants like you. Vizier Khan told his priests they would have to punish the children for all the crimes they will commit in the future. There will definitely be rebels against us when they grow up. You heard what they said, priest. Tell me, what is the punishment for being a rebel according to our religious laws? The priest obeyed. Sir, crimes in the future? Well, yes, it is a crime, and such rebels are bricked alive inside a wall. Wazir Khan ordered that the children be brought out to be killed in the open so everyone could see what happened to people who disobey. The common people were surprised. What a horrible thing to do to children. If rulers end these precious young lives, it means the end of the empire. Mata Gujuji couldn't see what was happening to her precious and heroic grandchildren. Up in the cold tower, she was praying for them continuously. My precious children, may God and Guru continue to bless you with the sweetness of the Holy Nam. May you live forever in deathlessness. May you continue with fearless hearts. Bless your precious souls. Mata Gujuji's prayer continued to hold them. The young Sahib Zadeh looked so beautiful that even the torturers' hearts brightened to see them. I'm sorry, children, to have to do this to you. I don't want to do this. 
but we are under orders. The boys wouldn't hear of it. They said, build the bricks fast and bury the Mughal Empire quickly. Do it as quickly as possible. The brave princes chanted, I remember the Nam. Ik on kar sat naam karta purak nirbo nirve kal murak ajuni se bang kuprasad jap aad sach chukad sach happy sach the bricks were being built higher and higher and higher. Sahib Sadez are over. The royal son of the Guru started crying. His brother asked, Why are you crying? Zorova said, I'm crying because I'm older and stronger than you right now. Sahib Zadeh Fateh Singh was confused. Why would make this make you cry, brother? Baba Zorora Singh Ji said, If you leave your body first, you'll be in the lap of Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. You'll be with God before me. I don't want to be separated from God for one second. I want to be merged. I want it so much. People in the crowd began to cry too. They are like angels on earth, so beautiful, so brave, so precious. The fearless sons of Guru Gobind Singh Ji had gone through the worst. As they were being closed up inside a wall, they got lost in meditation on the God. Finally, the air inside ran out and they became unconscious. The torturer decided to end their pain and finish their lives. The two courageous, bright souls went to meet their true family with the angels. When Mata Gujriji heard about the children, she knew that her purpose in life was also complete. So her graceful soul left her body and she joined them. Later, Guru Gobind Singh Ji heard what happened. He was not sad, but he knew what needed to happen. He took his arrow and pull the plants from the ground with it. Then he said, oppression and injustice needs to be taken out from the root. Inspired by the young boy's sacrifice, the Khalsa later swept across the land and took out Wazir Khan and many other tyrants. Eventually the Khalsa built a huge kingdom all throughout the land. We will always remember that as Khalsa we are here to chase away the darkness and bring light into this world. We remember Mata Gudriji for her sacred prayer, for her grace, her strength and her love. If you ever feel shy about standing out as a Sikh, remember the young princes and you will have courage. If you ever see a bully or a tyrant, remember the Sahib Zade, their courage and their happiness. Let us always be fearless of death and always remember our sweetness. Wahe Guruji ka khalsa, Wahe Guruji ki fateh. Guru Gobind Singh Ji is a great light in this world. People who live in darkness do not like the light. Even though Guruji never threatened or attacked anyone, many people have still decided to become enemies of the Guru. Hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Storytime and I'll see you very soon.